Hi, so in this video we're going to be looking at the permanent income hypothesis. This was developed by Friedman, another Nobel Prize winner, and this is a, another model where we're looking at intertemporal choice, and more specifically, similarly to the life cycle hypothesis we looked at in the previous video, we're looking at consumption choices over someone's lifetime, and in this case we can almost interpret it beyond someone's lifetime. So in the permanent income hypothesis, we are making an assumption about utility where we suppose that individuals have altruism towards their children and children beyond that. Uh, what does this mean? It means that their utility depends on the utility of their children. So if we define generations by different time periods, we have utility as, let's say, the first person this is just our first generation of the model utility of the first generation. Their utility is a function of the consumption of this person in the model, but plus the utility of their children. Uh, but this, this is multiplied by a discount factor. We discussed discount factors. So basically their utility will depend on their consumption plus slightly slightly negatively weighted or not negatively weighted but weighted less than one the utility of their children so this this is probably quite accurately representing what happens in real life uh, if we we each value our our lives on our or we value our utility on how much we consume across our lifetimes but we also care about our children's utility but probably to a slightly lesser extent than we care about our own. So, okay, then we look at their children's utility, the second, second generation, and again, their utility is given by utility from their consumption, plus the discounted value of their children's utility, which will be the third generation. And we can just kind of iterate this for future time periods uh, to, to infinity, actually, and then we get the utility in, say, period infinity equals the utility of uh, consumption in period infinity plus the weighted value of the future future persons or their children's utility. It's probably better not to write this as infinity, but we, we could write uh, sometime t. Uh, but we need to know that this t is going to tend to infinity. There is no finite t that we end up at. So now, now that we have we have infinitely many of these utility functions, we can simply substitute them into each other. So as you can see, we have we have an expression here for utility of person two, and we can substitute that into person's one utility function. But when we substitute that in, when we substitute in person two, we're going to have this term for utility of generation three. So we're then gonna have to substitute in our function for utility of person three into this, and then utility of four into that. So we have, we have an infinite um, representation of utility of person one if we, if we keep substituting all of these back into utility of person one. Uh, so what, what does this imply? So we can now write utility of person one equal to their utility given by consumption one plus the discounted value of utility given by person two. Then we keep substituting in, um, but now we have the discount factor squared for person three, and then we go on and on for infinity, and we kind of have the, this pattern of this, the discount factor to whatever period we're in, minus one, multiplied by the utility given uh, consumption of consumption in period t, and this goes on for infinity. So this, this t, again, just goes off to infinity, and we have an infinite representation. Uh, so as you can see, the person in, the, the person in generation one, they, they care about their own utility, they care about the future, or their children's utility, but discounted, they care about their grandchildren's utility, but again, discounted slightly less because, because person two cares about that person's utility and 
person, person one cares about person two's utility, and so on. So each generation acts as if it's infinitely lived. Person one is choosing their consumption based on maximizing this whole sum. So they want to maximize, they don't want just want to maximize the utility they get, they get from their own consumption, but they perhaps want to leave a bit of income for their child so they can maximize their consumption and so their child can leave money for their grandchild and so on. So this is how our utility representation looks. So now we have a preference relation, we're going to also want to get a budget constraint so we can maximize the utility function with respect to the budget constraint. In the previous video, we looked at deriving the budget constraint for a 70 period model in the life cycle hypothesis. And in this model, it's going to be a very similar construction method, but we're gonna do it to infinity. So I won't go over deriving it all again. Uh, watch that video if you're not sure how to do this, but obviously we can't substitute things into each other infinite time. So I'm just gonna write out what the what the end product of doing all the substitution of each period's budget constraints are. But so what we get is the sum of infinitely many terms starting from the first generation. And what are we summing? We're summing the income at time t, but these incomes are discounted at the interest rate using compound interest, so raised to the power of t minus one. We also in this model allow the the generation to have some initial set of assets uh, as generations do care about their next of kin we we allow their generation to begin with some assets that have been given to them from the previous generation and so this this is the present value of income and this is equal to the infinite sum of consumptions over time over an infinite horizon and again, we have to discount these using compound interest at the interest rate. So we have the same expression. So this is our budget constraint. And so we have this term here, which is the present value of our current and future income, but stretched out to infinity. And on the right hand side, we have the present value of current and future consumption again over an infinite horizon. It is worth noting that when substituting all these terms into each other, we have made what we call a no Ponzi condition. Uh, this, this condition looks a bit complicated, but it's uh, at this stage, we don't really need to, it's not necessary to know exactly what, what this condition uh, or the exact algebraic function of this condition means, but it looks something like this, called a no Ponzi condition. Um, I won't explain the exact terminology of this, but it basically says that we don't allow ourselves to pay off debt with even higher debt in the future, just um, for, for an infinite time horizon. Um, because as we're looking at an infinite model, what, what we could do is prom promise that we're going to pay off our debt in period two, and then we do pay off that debt to someone, but by but we finance paying off that debt by borrowing of someone else, and then in each period we do that for for infinite periods, and we just keep doing that. But what that would mean is that we're not able to set our present value of income equal to present value consumption because we we don't have any exact income level. We could we could justify just buying an infinite amount of things in period one and just pretend that we're gonna pay it off in the future and we just keep paying it off, building more and more debt. So we assume that's not possible for using a no Ponzi condition, which looks like this. So that is an assumption that we've made, which seems reasonable. We, we can't have infinite, or we can't have debt stretching off to infinity in our model. Okay, so we've got these two conditions. We have our utility function and we have our budget constraint. So, what, what, do we, what do we always do? We want to maximize our utility function with respect to our budget constraint for our consumer. So that's what we'll do. So we'll maximize this function and we are maximizing it respect to consumption 
in period T or something in infinite periods. So let's just write this as this, that we're summing to infinity starting at T1. So we're maximizing with respect to every single one of infinite consumptions. And we're maximizing that such that uh, this, this budget constraint holds. We, we spend all of our present value income and it's equal to present value consumption. So we doing this, we get a, well, to solve this, we'll use the Lagrangian. So we have this maximization problem with where well, we're maximizing the utility function. And then we have our budget constraint multiplied by our Lagrange multiplier. And so we take first order conditions for this Lagrangian function. So let's take our first order conditions, but we're going to take them with respect to some general terms, consumption in period T and consumption in period T plus one with respect to CT and CT plus one. So it, when we solve these conditions simultaneously, this means we can get a general result that we can apply to any time period we want to. So let's, let's do that. So we differentiate our Lagrangian with respect to CT. And it, the, the maths may look complicated, but all of, all of these terms that aren't that don't have a CT in them just cancel out because we have additively separable utility and our budget constraint is just added over infinitely many terms. So any term that doesn't contain a CT just simply disappears and we only need to concentrate on the terms that have CT in them. So if we, if we do that, we simply get out this result. Um, so beta t to the minus 1 multiplied by the differential of the utility function evaluated at consumption at time t is equal to our Lagrange multiplier over 1 plus r to the t minus 1. And then we take another first order condition with respect to consumption at time t plus 1, which we have a slightly different result, but if you notice, it's just the same result, but we're plugging in ct plus 1 uh, to, the above, to the above equation. And again, that, that just gives a sense of why, why this result is quite general. So we get these two first order conditions. The ct plus 1 is beta to the t multiplied by the marginal utility at ct plus 1 equal to the Lagrange multiplier over 1 plus r to the power t. And so what do we do with these two equations? Well, we can, we want to get rid of our Lagrange multiplier lambda here. So we can just rearrange, let's say we'll rearrange the top equation here to get to isolate lambda. And then we can substitute it in to the other equation to get a simultaneous equation representation of these two with util marginal utility in terms of consumption period t and consumption period t plus one. So we will do that. So again, with a bit of simple substitution and a little bit of rearranging, we can combine these two equations to get an equation that says that marginal utility of consumption from period t is equal to the discount factor multiplied by the one plus the interest rate multiplied again by marginal utility of consumption in period t plus one. Uh, and again, we've, we've seen this equation before in a previous video where we derived the Euler equation. This is the Euler equation, but it, in, in the previous video, we had that this time t was period one, and we were just using a two period choice model, but this Euler equation is kind of our bread and butter for all intertemporal choice models. I won't go over the intuition in detail, but we need this condition to, to hold in an intertemporal choice model if we are optimizing as a consumer. And again, that intuition, we talked about that in the equation when we derived this. But yeah, so watch that video for a bit more intuition on that. And so we can then 
use this condition with certain restrictions on our discount factor beta to make to make this one plus r term cancel out and we can very much simplify our permanent income hypothesis model and that will be the topic of the next video but we will call that one here now that we've derived the Euler equation. So thanks for watching, check out the playlist to see what happens when we introduce current income shocks permanently and temporarily into the model and subscribe for future videos and of course like if this was at all useful.